We have a lot to discuss. Hello, Hardies. It's me. It's the When Calls the Heart After Show here on JLJ Media. And wow, what an episode. I did not expect any of this episode. I had tears in my eyes at parts of this episode. Um, I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to decide how I want to begin. This was really... Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Episodes like this are the reason why I fell in love with the show in the first place. Um, the show, I've, I've said it before in previous shows, previous seasons, when they give us slices of life as the storyline, where it's relatable even to today, or relatable in any culture, or relatable at any age, um, they do a great job. Always have. And there are two storylines that I'm like amazed at what the writers came up with and are showcasing them. One is um, the treatment of women by men in power and cultural ties. I, I'm like, and I'm just like, I for the first time in a long time, I don't even know which one. They both were so good. I don't know which one I want to start with. Um, and there were some other little tidbits that were good, but I'm like, I want to start with. I okay, let's see. How do I start? I'm like, I'm, like, I'm totally speechless. This is episode. Did I say this is episode six? I don't even know if I even said they were halfway through the season. I was very impressed by this episode. Um, I'll start quickly with the May Sue thing. I, if you ever see my Amanda Wong and if you please watch it, it's AAPI month. It's I mean it's Asian American Forgotten Month. I uh, was just with my former co-host Marissa Serafini, who's Filipino, and she loves. She said I loved your episode, Amanda, and I just saw her for my birthday. And thank you everyone for the birthday wishes. Thank you so much. It was the best birthday I've had in five years. So thank you so much. I want to say that. Um, but we'll start with that one because we talked about it. I talked about it with Marissa, who is who's Asian American, and was why you know when we talk about this, how representation matters, and along the way they're showing us May's Chinese side, which I love this on the show because it's realistic, and it was funny when she was talking to Mike at lunch. Because cutesy, you know, that's all the cutesy stuff in there too. But she mentions again her mother, her brother. We learn she has a brother who's a merchant marine out there somewhere. Her mom's cooking. And many of us know this. This is and this is any culture. Food is part of your love, giving of love. Food is good times. Food can be religious and spiritual. Food is highly personal, familial. I can just keep naming all these words. But food is that. And I grew up with all kinds of, I'm multicultural and multiracial. And I grew up with all kinds of different foods. Um, and watching your mother cook or grandmother cook or being, in, you know, I was always in the kitchen. Um I've learned certain dishes that are familial dishes that I make, that it is something and it stays with you and it's, and it's inside of you. But food is also a giving thing. You're giving to someone you cook, you're giving a piece of you to someone. And this was very unexpected and wonderful in the trajectory and timeline of Mesu and, and Hickam's relationship. Um, we got a little bit of his side with his sister, so we get a little bit of her side. I like that. Writers, producers, great job. I'm completely um enthralled with that. And how she talks about it and, and once at, at first doesn't have again, she's not feeling strong enough, thinking she can't can she do this? It's hard to go up against your your mother and grandmother or that kind of stuff, the cooking. You know, you don't think you're not as good as they are. It totally that's totally natural and wonderful. But he gave her a comment and said, I want, you know, please. Um, I like the scene where she goes to the general store and yeah, some of the things are not common. And she says same in Chicago. And 
And you know, I'll I'll put aside they had a walk in the back somewhere collecting dust. Okay, that's fine. I didn't chuckle, I'm like, okay. Um, but that's fine. It's part of this is for the greater good. Um because that scene when Hickam walks in, and I love all of the Chinese decoration, the colors, all of that stuff was in there. And she had her cute her cute dress on and hair beautiful and that food looked good those dumplings the pan fried rice i'm like i was hungry um and i love the dialogue where she's now feeling confident she's sharing a part of herself and he says i want to get to know all of you and i thought that's really beautiful. I had a tear to my, in my eye. I thought that was very, a few tears in my eye. I thought that was beautifully done. And the part that got me a little bit also at the end was when he pulled out the chopsticks. I want to show you something. So it was my birthday. And, um, and some of you don't know this. And I talked about this with Amanda. I am, I have, I have Asian. This, I'm coming from some Asian descent myself. Um, and I was raised with uh, Chinese and Japanese culture. Um, and one of my friends went to Japan and brought me back these beautiful chopsticks with my name on them. They're probably coming up backwards on here. But they're beautiful. I mean, look how beautiful they are. Um, he did it for my birthday. He, was in, he brought me this and some coffee. But they're just so beautiful. Now, I, my brother and I, we, we use chopsticks regularly. I know how to use them. And, but my name is on them. So if you're, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm showing you my chopsticks that have, and they're, they have my name engraved on James Lott Jr. And they're from Japan. So I just want to show that. They go, how ironic for this show that happened to me myself. That I'm over here. I'm going to use them. Um, it just looked really good. Those everything looked really good. Uh, so congratulations to that part of the storyline. And again, I think anybody of a culture that's not common where they are can will want to share something part a part of them. And I thought, okay, when calls the heart, you got me. This I did not from the years I kept saying, bring in more culture, bring in more culture. Well, you are doing it this season, and I highly appreciate it. Uh, especially this month. Uh so that's one storyline. Uh another storyline, the other big one that I um loved and had emotions about and that's the elizabeth storyline bringing back a former character thomas higgins was genius to carry the story the actor i don't know what his name is or who he is he was so appropriately creepy the way he would say her name the way he would say his words i had i felt like i felt dirty i was like this is not he's he's not good um, so of course they're going forward because it's the place, because Hope Valley is now part of the larger school system. Uh, he's a superintendent, territorial superintendent. Um, so now it's part of her past. He had hit on her back in the day and all these things. She tried to turn him in, didn't work. This is happening today. This is happening still. This is happening in Hollywood. It's happening out in the world. In corporate. This is so timely that it's sad, first of all. But secondly, I like how quietly this was on the show today. Like it was, it was the major storyline, but it was like, I like the way it was done. It was made very personal. Um, all the scenes felt very intimate in a way that wasn't good, right? So it started to start off, you know, he... He comes in, I'm going to make sure I want to go through all these. He comes in, he's just so, like, here are these booklets. So he's like, you have to, you know, these are the things you have to look at because now you're part of the school system, that whole thing. And she's she's already on edge seeing him because Wilcox didn't come. She's already on edge already. Then he has the nerve. This, this is good writing. This is good writing. Has the nerve to bring up her breakup from Lucas. I remember writing down my little notes, creep. And trying to have dinner with him. 
you know exactly what he was trying to do from the very as soon as he walked through the door, you're like, oh my goodness, he's trying to get at her. And it was just gross. And just the gaslighting. You, know, you see yourself in old grudge and all this stuff and trying to get her, like, you know, trying to get her to meet with him. Um, just talking down to her. Oh, just every moment he was like, no. It was just, it was. And Aaron did such a great job with her facial expressions, her body language. She wasn't standing tall and strong. She was kind of cowarding at first, kind of like shoulders down, but she was on edge. Her voice trembled. It was it was uncomfortable to watch. It really was. And later, there's this, you know, I know I'm a broken record. I love Pascal Hutton. You know that already. Pascal, you know I love you. You know, I, I'm just such a huge fan. The scene was late at night. Rosemary lives next door, so she's there's this light on, comes in the room to ask her what's going on. And they have this real talk. She explains that he's just here. And Pascal does this thing where she lowers her voice. Her voice gets a little deeper. And she's like, did he proposition you today? And looks right at her. And the way she said it, my there was a lump in my throat. It's like, it was real girl talk. That's why I think I wrote that real girl talk. And Elizabeth's reaction was completely, completely warranted. I'm not sure. I can't tell. He makes you seem like he did or didn't. And there's doubt in there. And Rosemary was not having it. But she was gentle. She was gentle yet firm. She was like, we have to stop him. You can't let him do this. You know, we have, you know, you're strong. Like, it was like, we, she was serious. I'm just saying, and it just seems before that she's hilarious over here and comical. And I have some, we'll talk about her story, their storyline in a second. Like, it was comical. But she was like, girlfriend, what do we need to do? And that was, and just like my heart, just like, oh my goodness. It just was, you know. And then later when Thomas comes back in, the next day Thomas comes in, He's like, you're here early. The way he says it, just like, it was so, like you said, it was creepy. It was so creepy. And she's putting, I guess, the assignment on the thing. And, and she, he mentioned, what, what's the assignment this morning? It's art. It's an art project. He down talks art, which in a way he's down talking her. But he just, he just pulls, you know, forward, he pulls back, like, it's just, there's this, the slight push and pull, which is he, which he is getting off on. Now, I said a few expletives when I was watching. I won't say them here is a family show, but I'm going to tell you, I was like, I, I wanted to smack him in the face. That's how good the actor was. The scene was, um, and there's a discussion that happens that's also real about how children learn differently, and she said. You know, this book, there's some good advice and there's some good stuff in the book. But, you know, basically, it just like you go, it was like one size fits all. And he wrote the book, of course. Of course he did. So he didn't like that answer. But again, he was like, it's like he was playing with her. Like, it was just like he was toying her around like a, like a mouse or whatever. Um, and I just thought it was, and he ends with the whole, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. But see, then I didn't see this coming. Then Anna walks in. And I immediately felt like, and I, I got daughters, I got granddaughters. I immediately wanted to go to the TV <laughs> and snatch him out of her, snatch her out of there. It's like, and Elizabeth had that same face. She was like, oh, beep. It's all thing there when he walked in. And he's all friendly to her. And that, oh, that gets Elizabeth. That's that just that alone does something. And then later, what a great scene. We don't know what they're talking about, but Elizabeth sees Higgins talking to Anna as she's waiting for her car. He walks off, she walks over. So he walks over with a purpose and was like, What's going on here? And she's like, He's gonna help me. And he's gonna, he's gonna people are gonna talk to you, blah, blah. blah. And this was like, oh my goodness, this can't be happening. 
So the turn, the tide of her, it's it's turning. She's just like this can't happen. This just like literally just can't happen. So then it becomes this. I just I gotta do something. I gotta do something. You gotta protect Anna. And because she says to she says to to Elizabeth, Elizabeth says, you know, be careful when she gets cut off, the car comes. And it's and it says that they're always looking out for me. Oh. There it is. There it is. So then Elizabeth, she confronts, she confronts Thomas at the salute. She's like, okay, this this ain't gonna work. And it was so good. And when he says, you know, she's like, you know, blah, blah. And leave Anna alone. And when he gets up and 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 go, in a great direction also, and I'm watching everything, great direction, and gets beside her and just kind of casually was out there, the Jack Thornton school. And I was like, oh my God. And he basically threatens if she don't do what he wants, she can rename the school. He can rename the school. That hits home. I think that's what really got the Anna thing. And then you're going to try to erase Jack and his legacy. Oh, I'm just feeling it. And so there was a scene that I think was kind of was necessary on some level. Because this, I mean, I have to remember there's also a Nathan Elizabeth romance um, happening. And Nathan finds her and by a lake, and she's crying, she's going to fall into his arms. But what happened next, I thought, was some beautiful work done by both of both both of them, both Kevin and um, Aaron, where she's they're sitting in the in the schoolhouse, and she just tells a story to him and recounts it. And anyone who has been harassed, sexually harassed, or propositioned, or threatened. Or even assaulted. Um, it's to share. You you hold on to the story to yourself, thinking I can handle it. I don't. Want, it's, there's some embarrassment. There's some shame. There's some guilt. There's some confusion. So if you say you feel like you say it out loud, will this person believe what I'm saying? You're also reliving it as you're talking about it, and. Many folks know, and I don't know if any of you Hardys knows, but many folks know that I am a survivor of a sexual assault in my life when I was younger. I've, I've done talks about it, and I, I, I openly talk about it, um, share my story. I won't share it here, obviously, but I just, I just want you guys to know that I had a personal feeling when she was recounting the story to someone else, someone she cares about, how that's not easy, but it's also you feel like you're getting a load off your chest. And I've been there and it's not easy. And I was crying. I was crying. I was crying the whole I was crying the whole I was crying the whole time. And I thought, again, but that's beautiful work, beautiful writing, beautiful acting. And she's sharing a story. And you know, and Nathan was like, you have to stand up to him. You have to do something. You can't, you can't. He empowers her to do something because this is, you know, this is not good. And because at first she didn't want to go to him. That's a natural thing we do. But I don't want to go to, I don't get, I don't want to do anything. I'm going to get worse. But apparently they devise a plan and it was very satisfying where she has him come over there to the schoolhouse and basically admits all the stuff that he's done. And Nathan walks out and like, you're caught. But of course, he's not going to go down fighting. He's not going to go down easy. I mean, he's like threatening things and doing stuff. But I love that he goes to Lucas. <laughs> the part that made me chuckle a bit. Thank you, I'll go to the governor. And you broke up and all this stuff. I'll come to you. And it was like, uh, before this all happened, uh, they told me beforehand, I made some phone calls. And I believe, I believe all the women and I believe anybody you hurt. There you go, kids. This town comes together, and he tried to threaten the governor. And they're like, you know, and he's like, uh, dude, was that just a threat? To a public official? Um, so I don't know if they're going to go any further with this, if, if you're sorry, but I think it's very interesting that they showcase this kind of story, which is very common back then, I'm sure, and even now. Um, and once again, the message is to get help. 
think that's the message that you don't have to handle it all alone. Try to find someone, whether it's in your personal life or a professional, to help you if someone is out there to hurt you and and to protect the ones you love that might be affected by this person. You don't want them people to continue doing this kind of stuff. It's just it's horrible. So it brought them closer together. That's fine. But to me, that was legitimate. Like it was a legitimate storyline about sexual entrapment, abuse, you know, assaults, all that stuff. I mean, it was at those really I I never expected that from from when calls the heart. So I will again I give them kudos for that storyline. And it was really well done. Um I know. How do we so to end this on a kind of an upper upper beat, that's not even a word. There's a couple of tidbit stories that were fun. Goldie's first birthday, that baby is the cutest. I can't even just I just the baby is the cutest. Lee is the mayor, his sign is up there. This whole thing about talking to a few people, turn up being listened to the whole town. That's funny. Rosemary making fun of his clothes at first. Hilarious. That was there. And then, of course, the whole Rosemary and Bill thing. I just love them together. But she walks in with the stroller. He's just like, oh, my God. They keep it. And then there's like files that made me chuckle. But Rosemary does. See, and I hear the thing, too. When it calls the heart, does show. Do you show? Does show. how uh, like, But they have strong women in the, in the community. And I love that it was Rosemary that found actually a connection between Pike and Montague, that she did the hard work and she found a connection. It's also within her because she's now a journalist and a publicator. So it's kind of like, it makes sense, but I'm glad it wasn't just, you know, Bill figuring it out and telling her, it's like, she figured it out and they really are getting along. And I love this, I love this thing. It's coming closer together. I love this part of the storyline. Um, hi to Flomo, we saw them for a minute. What was the other thing? VIHVP, a uh, uh, very important Hope Valley person. <laughs> oh, and Minnie and Joseph. They had a little quick moment of that, too. I think, I think that's coming up where he's trying to. So here's another thing that's really good. Okay, here's another lesson. I was going to end it on a high note. But I guess I'm going to end on another serious note. Um, he's trying to write a letter to Jacob, his brother. And he's just so angry. And Minnie says something that is, I always try to think this about myself all the time. What do you want from him? And that was such a smart thing to say. And he says, I, I want to be like when we were kids and we had fun and we played. Like, I, I, you know, whenever I have disagreements, like major disagreements with people, I try to always think, what is the outcome I want? Is that my, are we going to just fight because I think I'm right? I just want to fight to prove I'm right. Or do I want this fixed? Like, do I want this fixed? And so, I mean, that means your strategy has to change because if you want to, you want to fix something and you want to get closer together, right, together, then you have to work towards that. You might forego saying certain things or going down certain paths. You may choose, I mean, it's like you have to figure out and now get the way to get to there as opposed to just fighting and we're done. Um, or you might choose, like, what I want is, to put this to rest, we'll never be close, but I'll put this to rest. So then how do we get there? Um, how do I invite the open dialogue? All that. I mean, it's just, it's just I thought, okay, we're on, we're on to something. It's coming. It's, it's probably coming later this season. It's coming. Well, that was for what she said. Very true. I know this is, this is, I usually am so, you know, hyped up and like, I mean, but this one was a serious episode to me and I thought it was very well done. I'm seeing people saying best episode in a long time. I agree. I completely agree. Great writing because it focused on, for me, just human interest stories with our main characters. That's all I want most of the time. I, you know, yeah, I know love is part of it and all that stuff, but I really do enjoy these storylines that have messages in them that are really telling us a little something. I mean, it's like it's it's fine. It's like it's like it's like here's a deal. You may have gone through something similar. Here's a way. Here's something, here's something that's good for you, feels resolved. And I don't know. I just, I just, I love when, 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 when Cross Heart goes there. Um, it doesn't have to be graphic or anything salacious. It's just like it's, it's done in a very just 
classy sort of. I thought it was classy, which is like it's done in a way that's really well done. That's still family friendly and a lesson can be learned. And little Jack is cute, of course. I know next week we have Jack's Jack Big Jack's brother coming. That should be interesting. I'm like, are you gonna give me another episode of Cry Again? Um, but this episode, I give this episode uh, uh, a nine out of ten. Um, it was really well done. And I was, and so yeah, there you go. Check out my interviews with um Viv Leacock again. They're you know, they did a tribute, they did a thing at the end too for his dad. So I believe that was his dad, right? Um so that was very nice of them. But I did Viv Leacock and um Natasha Burnett, Amanda Wong, check out those interviews. They're out now. I'm working on some others, of course. Um, and of course, the show's audio and video. JLJ Media, all streaming service platforms, YouTube, live. If you're in, and all the new hearties that are liking my channel, thank you. There's there's like eight seasons of the show out there on my channel. Let's go to the playlist. You'll see them all and all the interviews. Um, and uh, we have a season twelve, you guys, and HR and HFR coming up too. We got there's so many things coming up in this in the Hardies universe. It's not even funny. I love it, love it, love it. Everyone, I'll see you next week. <laughs>